hello welcome to my channel again today I am going to show you how to make these beautiful little tiny miniature books I use these all the time and I've been making miniature books for years and believe me I have tried all kinds of techniques and this is the fastest really the best one that you can learn look at this See, they're very, very tiny. Sometimes I usually, well, I sometimes I, I do add a real cover to the books, like on, on these here, but sometimes I just leave it like this. I just use some whatever paper I want because actually many, many times if I want to create, for example, a bookshelf full of books, well, all you need is the spine like this, and I make it in different sizes and thickness. But if you want them to show around on the floor or on the table, I make a lot of shadow boxes with miniature furniture and stuff, and that's what I use it for. But you can use it for cards, I mean, you name it. So today I'm going to teach you how to cut these books, how to cover it with paper. And if you want to use covers like these, I will show you how to get it online, how to make it small and make it fit depending on the size that you want. So let's get to the video and the tutorial. I hope you have fun and you make a whole bunch of books like these. And I will show you some examples on uh, something that I've done in the past that I've used these books for, just to give you an idea. But you, as I said before, you can actually use it for anything, any kind of project and crafting uh, project that you might have. Here is a good example on how to use these miniature books. This is a shadow box that I made for a friend of mine who is a painter. And actually in this shadow box, the books were very important. You can see them on the floor right there on the table. He's a painter, I'm sure you can tell by now. But I made sure to have a few books everywhere because that's what his uh, studio looks like. It's very messy and a lot of art books everywhere. So I knew the artists that he loved. You can see on the right there, Picasso, Brennan, who is a very famous painter in my country. So that's one of the examples I wanted to show you on how to use miniature books. And now let's go straight to the tutorial. So here what we have is a bunch of magazines because I want to show you the type of magazines you should use for this uh, technique. I have, believe me, I've been doing miniature books for years and years. I've tried all kinds of techniques, but this one is the quickest and it's really the one that looks the best. And it, it takes no time at all. You're going to see it. But the first thing I want to show you is the kind of magazine that works for this. I will show you first the kind of magazine that doesn't. So what you're going to look at is at the, the way that it's the binding of the, uh, of the magazine see how this is round here it's not flat when you look sideways you can when you look at books you have the spine and this really would not work because you wouldn't have a, a very well defined spine so that that doesn't work throw that away i'm going to show you two that do so i have this one here see the spine it's thick and you can see and you can actually use this and this is what I'm going to show you how to do. You can cover this area with different pieces of paper or even the covers of the books that you love, but you have to have something that it has a spine. When you look here, see, it's flat. It has to be flat. So this one works. And what I usually do is I mix. I have another one here that is also very flat as you can see. But these are very these are different thickness, which is great because you want different books, right? You, you want different thickness for different books. So these two are perfect. So I'm going to show you how to cut one of them, and then you can use the technique for whatever you want. If it's very thick, sometimes what I do is I use these. You can use anything to just hold it in place, but you really don't have to. What you're going to do next is you need something that will cut through the paper, something like this. You need a ruler. Oh, I, I use the metal ones because then if this slides, it's not going to destroy the ruler. And I turn it around just so I know the thickness of the book that I want to cut. 
usually less than an inch like three quarters of an inch are is kind of perfect but it does depend on your project and what you want to do so i use this to just line it up really well see this that's why I, I use this cutting mat so that i don't destroy my table but i you it's usually very helpful to just line up straight so next thing you do is you're going to cut the paper and you just go over it many many times slowly you don't have to do this with a lot of strength just make sure that it's straight you don't want to bend this like this cut it very straight because otherwise it won't look right at the end so just keep cutting keep cutting i'm almost done here it will take you a few times depending on the thickness of the magazine and you want to use something that's very sharp and of course a cutting mat underneath because you don't want to ruin your surface I'm almost done here and we'll cut loose once you finish I think it's finished now almost maybe one more that's it there you go so you put this away you're going to need the ruler again but i just want to show you this is perfect see it's very straight and what you're going to do is turn around and cut in whatever size again i don't know how tall you want your books it depends on your project but here we're going to do this again i'm going to align this you use one of these lines here just to make sure that it's straight that's what the mat is good for too. Hold it in place. Here is a kind of a good size. Make sure you don't move once you start cutting. Sometimes I do that. It's going to take a few times too. Especially the spine because it has glue and it's kind of more difficult. There you go, one more. And here you have your perfect little tiny book. Now what I'm going to do, look, it looks perfect, doesn't it? It's a book, it's a miniature book. You have the pages here and you don't have to glue or anything. It, it's perfect for use. Now what you're going to do is, I'm going to show you how to cover it. If you want to use a cover of a book that you actually like and you want it to show if not you just use any kind of paper and you glue it in place and you have little books let me show you how to do that easy huh very very easy technique let me show you how to print your covers well, that's what i usually do not when they're sideways if, if i'm going to have the books placed like in a bookshelf or something sideways it doesn't matter but i always want one or two to show the front of the book so i just go online choose whatever book i want and here i'm just going to screen take a screenshot of this book the cover but you can also the other way to you can do this is you go on google in, let's let's just say i don't know the little prince that's a book everybody likes and it's going you're going to have a lot of options of images here what i do usually is i click on images let's say i like this one i click there and usually what you can do is save it save it as image save as image and then you save wherever wherever you want to go what you want to do let's see i don't know i'm gonna go on my desktop little prints and it's there so what i do because you need the measurement right so you open your word get a new document here i had a one open but that's fine so there you go i insert the image i go to my desktop little prints and the screen they're both there they're very big but i know the size i want because i have measured the size of my book so i just move them around a little bit and i just make sure that they are this the right size it will depend on what you what you're using i'm using pages here but if you use word here image 
and you can crop and you just make sure that it's the size that you need that will depend on what you're using I know that for me the size I need is let me click here see it shows when I move so one inch now I need I need way less than that so one inch height no it's even less seven eighth ninety two I guess I think that's that would do it what I usually do just to make sure is I click and I copy and paste and I make some copies of one a little bit bigger because I can always keep these because I what I do is I cut them and I make sure that I have different sizes this one is a little bigger this one I'm gonna make just a little smaller than the first there you go yeah is it smaller I'm not sure no it's kind of the same so I'm just gonna make it a little smaller and I, I, I just copy and paste and I make up at least four or five to see whatever works and I can even use this for another one and I'll do the same same thing with the little prints this is pretty much a good size here cut and paste and you make different sizes and you just cut the one and sometimes it's it's better to have it a little bit bigger because then you can just cut to the right size there you go okay and you, you just send this to your printer and then I'll show you how to put it together and I'm going to show you now also how to glue the paper and cut the right size to um, to just place it around the, the book in whichever paper you have in whichever color you need okay so just send that to your printer and I will be back now that I have them all cut just so you know I got 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 books out of one spine one magazine 12 books good that's good isn't it so let me just show you a few that I've already covered I have three here see the really cute look at that both sides the spine is very well defined that's why you need that spine see and when you put them together like this look how cute they look and that's what you're gonna do right when you put it on a bookshelf but sometimes as I told you you want to have one showing so what I'm going to show you now is how to glue the paper how to do it fast again and then how to apply a cover if you want these are the covers that I showed you they're perfect look at that very cute different sizes so it will depend on the one that I'm going to glue it on Let, just, let's just put this aside I'm going to show you how to cover the the book and one thing that I want to tell you is this is very flush see but sometimes they get let me show you once yeah they get they get very open like this it depends on the way you cut actually so what I do when something like this happens it's fine to have one or two but if that happens I just open it up and I add some glue just to get to get rid of that problem and you just press it and wait a little bit and it will be much better so yeah see it's much better you just see the pages that need see these two pages here but this one is fine now not a problem so what you do is you cut strips of paper of the paper you're going to use you measure the height of the book this one is two inches so what I do is I usually cut a little bit longer see than than what it's needed because you can always trim it let me show you see it's a little bit longer than you need and, and that's the best thing to do I also you don't have to do this but sometimes I use my bone folder just to break a little bit of the fibers and it makes it easier to glue and here's what you do so you put some glue on one of the sides make sure that you always get glue here on the edges here the corners a lot of glue here on the spine because you want it well defined and you just glue it on like this always make sure that it goes a little bit over here not very flush because otherwise it will show and you can always just just go around it and here's what I do when I go around I make I use my fingers or <laughs> my nails to just make sure that the spine is very well defined like this it does make a difference very elegant when you do that and then all you need to do now is glue this other side here 
very easy, isn't it? But believe me, I have I have been doing this for years, but this technique is the best, the fastest. See? It's perfect. Use a good glue, not very watery glue because they are never good. So what you do now is you just cut the rest. Get rid of that. See, you have more here on this side. You just go around with your with your scissors like this and you just cut it. Make sure it's flush. There you go. Perfect. There you have it. Your book is ready. Very quick, very nice technique. All those magazines that you have and you throw away, do not throw them away again. So now let's add a cover. Let's get the little prints. See, I, that's why I have different sizes because you never know what you're going to need. This one looks quite perfect actually. So that's what I'm going to do. And because sometimes I'll show you why I, I have covers on some of them. Because on my projects, I always want some books to show. So there you are. This one is kind of perfect for this size. Have a little bit more here to cut. There you go. You have a little prince. How wonderful is that? So this one, and what I do this, wh why the reason why I have some covers is that sometimes the project, what you need is you're going to put them sideways like this. And actually, if you use paper, a paper that is easy to see, if you write on it, I sometimes write little tiny names of the books here. But sometimes you want to just show one of them. Let me show you. Let's say you have a shelf here and you have three books but then you're gonna have one like this, or maybe on the floor. So whatever book you need, if sometimes you want to show some books, because uh, for me, for example, sometimes I do it for friends and I get some books that I knew they love, just to show that I know what your taste is and this is really personalized for you, and you use the covers like this. Otherwise, you just use whatever paper you have at hand, well, let me show you how many I got. 12. 12 little books that I'm still going to cover, but now you know how to do it. Have a lot of fun producing your miniature books, and I would love to see your project. So anyway, thank you so much for being here with me. Miniature books, have fun, make your own, and thank you for coming to my channel again. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button, okay? Because it does help YouTube show us around and, and make sure that other people like you that are interested in crafting see my channel. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.